Today on Rustbelt Oregon, I'm going to explore the brief history of Daisy Outdoor Products venture into the production of firearms. Yes, the company best known for the beloved Red Rider BB gun once tried its luck at developing real firearm rifles. The year was 1961. Case Huff, president of then Daisy Heaton Division of Victor and Comptometer, purchased a design for a new firearm developed by Belgian chemist Jules van Langenhover. Here is a picture of Jules van Langenhover with his new firearm design. The new gun would be known as the Daisy VL Rifle. The VL Rifle resembled a typical air rifle. What was different about it is it not only used compressed air to propel the projectile down the rifle barrel, the highly compressed air reached temperatures of 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, igniting the propellant attached to the back end of the projectile. What made the Daisy VL possible was the obturator, otherwise known as the obturator igniter. Like many BB guns of its time, the VL used a spring air combination. When cocked using the lever, a spring attached to the piston behind the loading gate is compressed and held in place by what is known as the sear. Pulling the trigger released a potential energy in the spring which rapidly propelled the piston, compressing air in front of it. This is how the average spring piston, like the Daisy Red Rider, function. When air is compressed, it heats up. What is unique to the VL in its ability to drastically increase the temperature of the compressed air to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit using the obturator, this heat is enough to ignite the nitrocellulose-based propellant, which is attached to the back of the projectile. The DAISY VL used what is known as caseless ammunition. Caseless ammunition eliminates the cartridge case that typically holds the primer, propellant, and projectile together as a unit. In the case of the DAISY VL, it used a 22 low power caseless round with no primer. As you can see in the picture, the 22 caliber bullet is directly attached to the nitrocellulose based propellant circled in the picture. The ignited propellant generated the bulk of the energy during firing. The 22 caliber bullet would leave the DAISY VL barrel at a velocity of 1150 FPS. DAISY VL ammunition came in plastic tubes containing 10 caseless ammunition. Ten plastic tubes were contained in a brick of um, ammunition that retailed for around $17. There were several different versions of the Daisy VL rifle released in 1968. The first thousand serial number guns are officially dubbed collector's models. They had a wood stock and a plate engraved with the collector's name and a rifle serial number. This is the top rifle in the picture. After that, Daisy Heaton made a mix of a standard model using a plastic stock of which roughly 19,000 were produced, which is the bottom rifle. The presentation model, the middle rifle in the picture, has a, was, was the same as the, as the top collector's model, but the buyer would put their own name on the plate. Daisy VL models prices varied from the $29 standard model to the $40 collector's and presentation model. Even the $29 price tag was a bit pricey in 1968 for a single shot 22 caliber rifle. The process of loading and firing the DAISY VL is as follows. Number one, engage the safety. Number two, pull back pump lever to open the breech. Number three, insert a single caseless round into the breech. Number four, push forward pump lever until it is flush with the force stock. Number five, aim. Number six, disengage the safety. And number seven, fire. In 1968, spirits were high at DAISY as it looked like the VL would be a great seller. The profit margin would be good per unit as the VL was cheap to manufacture as it contained fewer parts than a traditional firearm. In addition, production costs were low on their custom caseless ammunition as there was no need for a brass case or primer. And then came 1969. Daisy for some reason did not secure the proper license to produce firearms. Since the VL used both compressed air and a combustible propellant, the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Division of the IRS considered it to be an actual firearm. At the time, DAISY was only licensed to produce air guns and not firearms. Most likely due to cost, DAISY decided to not obtain a license to produce firearms. As such, all production of the VL and its caseless ammunition ceased in 1969, only after 23,000 units were produced. Today, examples of the VL can be had at auction for around $300 and its caseless ammo for $90 per 1,000 rounds. Most DAISY collector enthusiasts avoid them as they are classified as a firearm. A point of interest, DAISY briefly made a line of bolt-action 22 rimfire rifles in 1988 called Legacy. 
They were offered in wooden or plastic stocks. In addition, 7-shot box magazine and 12-shot rotary feed magazines were available. As with the Daisy VL firearm, most collectors avoid them. I hope you enjoyed my brief look at the history of the Daisy VL rifle. Please like this post and subscribe to Rust Belt Airgun so that you are alerted to my future posts. Thank you.